Only today, I was reading a comment on a podcast forum that said, if your goal is to make money from your podcast, you will fail. And based on the enthusiastic likes the comment got, you would think it was a proven scientific fact. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And here is why. This is the website of the Daily Wire and the Young Turks on the other side, right? Wildly different sides of the political spectrum, both share the same goal, get people to become paying supporters. The call to action is reflected in their website, their video channels, and in their podcasts. So if it works for them, perhaps the question then is one of delivery if you're trying to sell things. You know, podcasting is an intimate medium. Hosts are like friends in listeners' ears, and no one likes a friend, particularly someone you've just given your trust to, to then abuse it by forcing some sales pitch down your throat. But some podcasters sell without making it feel that way. Grant Baldwin, for example, of the Speaker Lab podcast, varies his appeals, his calls to action, but the one that hooked me in involved a tool that offered to help me for free. Now, in his show, he told me, in quotes, as a listener, he had a free tool that would tell me how much I could earn as a public speaker. He gave a really easy to remember URL, which I then tried when as soon as I got home to listen to the podcast while I was out on a walk. And after a few questions, it gave me the results. You can see it there. But only after I entered my email. His personality in the show is very genuine and friendly, not a spammer. So I was quite happy to give my email. Sadly, very quickly, the emails did start to arrive after that. But the first part of the process was really good. It was a call to action that I wanted to take. The thing is, unless a podcaster is genuinely making a show simply for the art of doing it, most people, at least those who are being honest with themselves, want something in return. It could be to sell a product, an idea, or even their personality. Longtime podcaster and online marketer James Schramko interviews his successful students about their success. Now, if you think about it, his entire show is a sales pitch for him. But it doesn't feel like it. There's actually a lot of genuinely useful and interesting stuff in there. Perhaps the reason people try tacky sales pitches in their podcast, though, is that they are desperate for a sale. You know, as Shramko says, sometimes it takes years for listeners to sign up to what he's doing. But he does sell high ticket priced items. A show about interior decorating with a website selling accessories could be turning attention into action the very same day. And what about Mozilla, the makers of Firefox, who I mentioned last time? How do you sell something that people don't urgently need, that isn't something particularly tangible? You explain the problem that they're moderately concerned about again and again until it becomes important to them. Every episode of In Real Life discussed reasons to be worried about security and privacy. And the next time you opened a browser on your computer, it was hard not to think twice about which browser to use. That was the aim. And there's nothing wrong with this if you think about it. It's a standard technique used by people selling everything from products to ideas to get people to take on board the implications of what you're talking about. So is it a scientific fact that podcasts that aim to make money will fail? Clearly not. So you have to ask yourself, and if you do, just for a moment in fact, ask yourself this question. What do I want my audience to do as a result of my podcast. By the way, saying I just want more sales or to grow my audience is just too vague. If we look at the examples I've just given, it needs to be more precise. So what are they going to sign up to? What tool are they going to use? What message are they going to take on board so it changes their habits and they end up buying your product or your idea? If those questions, by the way, leave you wondering, or you haven't got time right now, Join me on the podcast right now, where I'm going over a series of clarifying questions over about 10 minute recording. It is live on the link that you'll find in this social media post. 